Hello friends, welcome to Restoration Inspiration. Our hosts are Six Kids in a Glue Gun, Crafty Art Shack, and our co-host co is CJ. Please check out their channels in the description box, and please check out the playlist for other fun inspiration. Today, Terry will be painting on a, a screen mushroom. You, um, you can tell you know, there, but once you put it, you can put black material under here and then you won't see that the holes, but it's kind of what makes it unique and different is having those holes in there. <clears throat> I have painted screens for years, <clears throat> excuse me. And one of the first things you got to do is fill those holes. So actually, I just used my white paint. It took me eh, probably three coats. And then once you get those holes filled, it wipes on really well. So I am on my segment of Craft Around the Clock. If you have not joined that group, you need to go there and join because they have some amazing creatives from way before I get up in the morning till one more after me. Um, oh, they got metal trucks. Oh, we're just now starting to get our stuff is just starting to come out. Um, I bought my screen at Hobby Lobby. And when we did craft shows, I used to paint on screens out of old houses, windows. I used to paint the screen doors off of houses. Painted some big ones. And the, the big screen doors, though, you put a big snowman on there. You ran lights and greenery up the side. Oh, they were just absolutely beautiful. Oops. So... Anyway, I bought a lot of these screens at Hobby Lobby. Now, they were on clearance. I have, I bought so many that this was a couple years ago. I do not know if they still sell them. But you can make your own. I used to go to the thrift store and buy screen. <laughs> Sorry. I used to go to Menards or any um, hardware store that sells screen. And then go to the thrift store and buy... Um, old frames, take the picture out, staple some screen in there, that's all you have to do. Not much to it. And they're different. They always sell well at the craft shows because they're different, you know, you always have all the wood stuff, but this looks so much just different for people. And then I have a friend, her business page is Darla's Doodles, and that's all she does is screens. She, that's her whole business, and they make their screens. They are just beautiful, and she paints on all of them. You know what, we're going to go with a, uh, I was gonna go with the green stem, but we've got grass down here. I'm usually really slow trying to get a project done in 45 minutes, but if you want something fast and easy, these are a great go-to. And you don't have to be as detailed as I am on wood. I still shade it though.
Anyway, Darla, on a lot of hers, she will put um, lights in between the felt on the back and the screen so they light up. They're just beautiful. She does a good job with them. Um, what color do I want my stem? Um, you know what? I'm going to go... I'm going to go with the light blue. And we'll darken it. Now it doesn't look good now because we just have it based in. And we're going, once we shade this up, it'll look a lot nicer. And then we're going to put polka dots on it, make them look really pretty. Hey, Luetta. Oops. Hi, Kathy. I know. I. My mom had the canister set. I don't know if I ever did, but I remember mom had the home interior. Remember the mushroom with the big frog on it? And this is actually where I started my inspiration of wanting to be a painter and a crafter. It's because of mushrooms in the 70s. Crazy story, but this lady came around and you remember how home, um, home Interiors was such a big company and you had the parties at your house and all that stuff. Well, I remember this lady came to our house and my mom had what was called a plaque party. And this lady was taking bread dough and basically they were all mushrooms and then she was painting and uh, put them on plaques this size, a little bit smaller, all different shapes. And so they were called plaque parties. And I always thought, man, that's so cool. That lady's getting to play in salt dough and she's making money. <laughs> so she was making, they were mushroom plaques that went with your home interior. And that's what got me interested in the whole crafting thing. I thought, how cool would that be to make a living doing crafting? And that was, I don't even, I was in junior high when that happened. And so that's been, well, we're getting ready to go on our 45 school reunion. So that's been a lot of years ago. That's where I first, the first time I ever fell in love with the idea of doing something crafty. Man, I date myself with that. <laughs> That's been a long time ago. Now we need some brown here, though. And I am on the very last bit of brown. So, unfortunately, I'm going to have to hit my bottle. Because this is all I have left. Uh-oh. That's not good. Think any more is going to come out? We got a little bit of brown to work with. I should have checked that before I went live, huh? little ridges in here pretty soon. Then let's take a dark blue. Actually, I'm going to take my 
stopper because we don't have to do a whole lot to this. Oops. I just used this on another project. I might have to get a new dauber. Let's dry that up. Hi, Renee. <laughs> Go through that gooey duckling stage. <laughs> Pam, this is a pattern over already inside the group. We've already done this. It's just on a screen. But this is on the garden sign that's over on the website. And it had a saying next to it. So it was longer, but it's the same thing. Same pattern. It has two mushrooms. And that one's got a caterpillar beside it. Oops. You know what? I, there it goes. I wouldn't have such trouble with this if I would grab a new one. And then I don't want this to um, show over here, so let me get a piece of paper. So I can have some that are off of the page. So this would look really pretty in a 1970s kitchen. And well, my, yeah, my orange is still kind of wet, so after this dries up a little bit, we'll go back over our dots and make them uh, a little bit lighter. Get some black. But this is just a fast, fun project. Almost all my projects are very detailed and take a long time. So I just thought I'd do something quick for you tonight. Because you don't see all those, um, you know, the shading lines. And it all blends in pretty nicely when you don't have to deal with that. And they're mushrooms, so they're supposed to. Kind of looked a little bit dirty that they're out in this field. Just gonna rip a little bit of that dark color in there. And then we'll come back and add in some highlights. liner brush and go ahead and add some detail here. I always, I painted one of these inside my painting group and I did it on a black background and now I want a black light. <laughs> Your kitchen's all in Elvis? How cool is that? Um, That was my mom's color. We had like a green pinstripe wallpaper. And then you had that frog with the mushrooms on there. You know what? I My daughter's loving all that stuff from the 70s. 
I bet if she could find one of those, she would put it on her wall. Grab another coat here, can cover it a little bit more. Mushrooms are all over Hobby Lobby. And, Kathy, that one set that you were talking about that you had, um, I think it's like two hundred and some dollars for it on eBay. I had one not too long ago, and when my husband and I were doing the online auctions, I sold it for probably 25 bucks, and I wish I had it. Put that on there. Let's shade that up a little bit. And then we'll paint paint the frame and it'll look a lot better. Hi, Debbie. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Thanks to that, both Kathy's. All right, so I want a butterfly up here. And we're going to do that butterfly in. I think I want, I was going to grab my purple, but you know what? I want to do this butterfly in a dark blue to offset the bright colors of the mushroom. couple coats to fill in. Got a little bit too much water on my brush. Since you've got those holes in there, you want to try to keep your brush as dry as possible. Um, need some dark green. Shave it down here. Kathy Davis, I'm going to be doing a paint party here pretty soon. You'll have to come over to Casey and take a paint party with me. I need to teach it. My group and the Casey Coffee Shop has asked me to come up there and do a class. So when I do, you'll have to come over and take a class with me. All right, well, let's lighten that up now with a little bit of white. So much easier than painting um, on wood because you just don't see, you don't have to be as careful because it's supposed to look rustic. Much time. Oh, I've only. Oh, I'm good. Okay, I'm good. We can do. You gonna put a snail down here? Cause a snail would look cute. And that snail is going to be orange too. You can tell everything's wet, that orange is going right into that white, but that's all right. Pull some orange and some white across the top before we put our polka dots in this one.
I will let you know when. Uh, <laughs> Her clothes have even come back in style. <laughs> uh, yeah, who would have thought? It's like, mm, some things I hope never come back in style, and one of them was mushrooms, but I'm liking them this year, especially for outside garden stuff. I don't decorate. I'm not a decorator. If I was, I would probably put some in my home, but my home is pretty bare. I don't decorate with anything. I can paint. That's the only gift I was given. I'm not good at decorating, cooking. It's like, I got the one gift and that was it. Now we're working in a lot of wet paint, so we've got to dry it up. I don't know. I think it just needs a black light to go with it. I was looking at Walmart the other day, and they sell black light paint. But then I thought, okay, well, I sell everything that I make, so I'm not sure how many people these days have a black light in their house. But they sell black light paint, so they have to sell the black light somewhere. And you would think. I haven't seen a black light in years. Remember all of our black light posters on our walls and in just a little bit of touching some rope. Just want a little bit of red in there so I put some on the corner. I've been using a lot of these polka dots. I am loving polka dots. This, in fact, this is one that I did in my class tonight. Get those polka dots on there. Doesn't that make it look so cute? And then on this one, this one I've had laying around and unfortunately it wasn't sealed, so I've marked it up. But polka dots are really making a comeback these days. I've noticed them everywhere. So maybe it's polka dots like used to be on some of our dresses. Yeah, I got that one little piece right there. Fix it with some red. Okay, let's make a little guy down here. So we're going to leave it that dark, deep, dark color. These look really nice.
for Christmas when you have the um, um, snowmen. They're really pretty then. And what's good, see how I've got that little bit of orange paint? You can just go over that when it dries with some black and nobody will ever know it was there. And then this, yeah, I think I'm kind of blends in there, but we can make it separate. Oh, you know what would have been a cute was a little turtle. That would have been cute too. Because now I get to try to put this body in here and keep it separate from the grass. Shade it on this side to make it stand out. In fact, a little bit of black will make that stand out a little bit more. Okay, well that's drying up. Let's start on this frame. I'm in love with polka dots too. It's, and they're so easy, so it makes your project go so fast. And any of those sponge daubers, those were from the Dollar Tree. Any of them work well. And then once you paint your frame, you get it, um, Shade it up, it's gonna look even better. But I'm also in love with this green color. It's kind of a sea moss green. And I've been using it on a lot of things lately. In fact, which bottle is it? Actually, it's artichoke heart. I'll paint that butterfly with some uh, deep purple and yellow. Although this might have been pretty with with orange. I am loving, orange is my new favorite color. I went and ordered a couple of new shirts yesterday and I always get my shirts at um, the thrift store. But I went online on Amazon and I searched orange tops and bought a couple. I'm all about the orange this year. Darken this frame up a little bit. Now, if you took this frame and scrubbed it up a little bit and put some green stain or brown stain on it, it'd look even prettier. But putting that on really makes a difference. Find another sponge.
I put my hand in the, all that. Hi, Glenda. Hey, Stephanie. I am a big orange fan. Orange is my color this year. I love it. Not too many colors when I buy or get clothes. I don't really care, but I've noticed with my skin color, the orange really stands out. So I'm all about the orange this year. Cover these just a little bit more. I want them really white, white more than just want that red to show up a little bit. lighten this up a little bit so you can see that little snail a little bit more so it's going to be black. Make his shell stand out some more. Then I'll um, highlight it afterwards. Okay, the little guy needs to stand out. So let's put some black around him. Man, isn't that odd that I just had that whole talk about turtles and I should have made it a turtle? And then Stephanie jumped on here and Stephanie's like a big tur turtle fan. That was weird. if I can't see too much of his mouth because those holes aren't filled in. Okay, we'll let him dry up a little bit. And while he's drying, let's work on butterfly. So we've got
We've got this is a separate wing from this. We'll put white around it. We're going to fill that in with yellow once that's dry. So it doesn't match the mushroom. And his antennas won't stick out very well, but we can add a little bit of black to make them gray. I have to go over those again. Man, my camera is just not down low enough, is it? I got this thing half off my table. Deborah, it is a snail. Hi, Pamela. It is a snail, but I should have turned it into a turtle. I could put a turtle over on the other side because I have some time left. He's a cute little snail. I just want to add a few details up here. See if we can get those little pieces. And then we'll shade them up with some orange and put some little wonder if my little dots will show up. Let's try that. I'll put a little bit of yellow on my... Now let's make those look a little bit prettier than that. Well, isn't that just adding that little bit of orange really makes a difference. brings it to life now.
sometimes it's a little difficult to get into those holes the way they are. make his body show up a little bit more. Oops, better take that big thing of white off of there. Oh, I like, I love that navy butterfly against everything else. And it's not going to look so dark when you take it off of the, where you don't see it up against that brown paper. See how much prettier it is off of there. So if you were to put this on like a white wall, it would show up even better. So it just depends on where you would put something like that. And if it's up against the dark wall, it's going to look like you've got something that needs a black light. Hi, Sheila. Thank you. Cover up where I'm putting my fingerprints, but otherwise, I'm pretty good with this one. I don't know if I've got time to put a turtle in there, but I could try. I finally got it good at snails after our last class. I wonder. Everything's kind of green, isn't it? But at least if I get him up here, I'm hoping I can get his face in. All starting to come together. Got a little head up here. And then its feet, we'll put them gray. That way it'll show up against the background here, maybe. That'll take a little bit of shading. Down here at the bottom, I didn't really fill in my holes that well. And when you don't fill in the holes, it's harder to see. But when I did the great big um, the big uh, screens, I used texture medium. And that really fills them in. And I usually did them on here too, but I just kind of cheated and used white paint. It worked, but I would have had a better coat had I put texture on there first. So there's his long neck sticking out. I'm gonna dry him up a little bit. Hey Lori, thank you. Debbie, the little critters are the best part of it. I painted it on one of the ones I did. I had a little caterpillar and it was inchworm, inchworm. I guess there's a difference. Let's give him 
and just a few lines on his back. And then we will kind of highlight that head. I don't know if you guys remember, but now that we're talking about the 70s and it brings back memories from my bedroom not <laughs> with mushrooms on my walls, but we used to have these little plastic animals and I can't remember now if mine was a, I think mine was a frog and we made little houses for them out of our Kleenex box. Guys, ever do that? <laughs> I guess we just found some weird things to do when we were young, but where did you make them for your pet rock? Because I know most of you had a pet rock. I don't know if I ever got a pet rock that I paid for or that my parents paid for. But I went on the railroad tracks and got my own rocks. Wasn't that the craziest thing back then? Pet rocks. I wonder if you could get by with that today. Here, let me sell you a rock. I bet you could. Okay, so we got him. We'll put a little eye. Oh, and I gotta go. We have one more presenter here on Craft Around the Clock. So you guys all head over to Craft Around the Clock if you're not already there. And the next presenter is up and ready to do a project with you. And I'm going to sit here and do some little detailing because now, yeah. Once you start being able to put the detail in is where it becomes a lot more enjoyable. But we got a little turtle. We got a little snail. They all came together. So, hi, Valerie. All right, everybody. I will talk to you soon. You all have a good evening.